The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, and he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul, and he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Amen. Is it powerful? Now, you will notice how many times this appears. He leadeth me. He leadeth me. He leadeth me. Amen. Now, unlike um, what we commonly think, because of the kind of sheep and goats that we have in Ghana who are able to get along almost anywhere. And um, you get the feeling that a sheep can even eat kota. <laughs> because we have them everywhere. I was quite surprised one day when I went to the zoo in London. And I, I was so bored with the zoo. And the reason why I was very bored with the zoo was that I saw animals that I see when I drive around here. I saw them in the zoo. And I said, I do not have to pay to come and see these goats and these sheep. We have them freely moving around everywhere. Even cows. You find cows, as large animals as cows, are found everywhere. So this gives you a, an impression that they can get along anywhere. They don't even need to be in any particular place. But ladies and gentlemen, you will notice here when the, when the psalmist says, the Lord is my shepherd. What he is saying is that what he, David, a shepherd, is and has been to the sheep, the Lord is to him. And it is only really a shepherd who understands what this means. Amen. And I, I know that my background is not farming. I've never been into farming. I've never been a farmer. But um, I think that it is very, very revealing that an intelligent person like a gentleman called Philip Keller was a farmer and he was heading sheep and he noticed certain characteristics and certain things that happened to sheep when they were not constantly being guided. All, all this can be found in my book, The Art of Shepherding, which is a book I'm preaching from now. Somebody said, why do we preach from a book? I would suggest you to go to another church, okay, where they don't preach from a book. All right? You have too many questions in your head, and there are too many criticisms about everything that we do here. So I would suggest that you go to another church where they don't use a book. Okay? We'll be better off without you. Because if I'm preaching from a book that I've written, and, and any of my pastors is preaching from a book that I've written, and you find something wrong with it, you are in the wrong place. We do not have to explain every step. That Why do you take, why was your last footstep two and a half feet? Why wasn't it three feet? <laughs> why do you stand at one place? Why do you move to the side? Why do you stand, why do you stay, why do you talk about shepherding? Why don't you talk about heading? Why don't you, talk, I mean, look. <laughs> I'm tired of you. Now, 
This gentleman, Philip Keller, how many are interested in what he, he found? He said that without guidance to the sheep, when he was practically a farmer looking after sheep in New Zealand, without guidance, sheep would follow the same trails until they became rats. Not rats, rats like a hole. The sheep would gnaw at the grass to the very ground until even the roots are damaged. In such places, the grass roots are poured out of the soil, leaving utter barrenness behind. Such abuse means loss of fertility and the exposure of the land to all ravages of erosion. So, without guidance, he noticed that the sheep just go back on the same road that they went on before. Number two, without guidance, sheep would graze the same hills until they turned the sh- those hills into deserts. Because they are so repetitive in their nature that they never vary what they do. So that place becomes a desert if you don't guide them. And number three, so he noticed that the, 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 the greatest single safeguard for a shepherd, which a shepherd has in handling the sheep, was to keep them on the move. One of the greatest important safety precautions that needed to be taken when handling the sheep was to keep them moving. Because if you, if you, if you don't keep them moving, they turn the, that place into a desert. Number three, without guidance, it was found that sheep would pollute their own ground until it was corrupt with disease and parasites all right now because of the behavior of the sheep and their preference for certain favored spots these well-worn areas became quickly infested with parasites of all kinds in a short time a whole flock can thus become infested with worms nematodes and scab amen So you'll see right here that without some kind of extra guidance, the sheep keep on going on a self-destructive path. Now that is you and that is me. We need guidance so much. And you must consider this message in two ways. Consider it as a shepherd, if you are becoming a shepherd, and consider it as a sheep. Because every shepherd is also a sheep. This is a truth and a reality that is becoming more clear to us. That people are both shepherds and sheep at the same time. And that whether you like it or not, God calls us sheep. So we need to look at sheep to understand how we behave. So one day I bought a a big book called Diseases of Sheep. A, a big book, I mean, an agriculture, agriculture, big textbook on the diseases of, because I wanted to study what are the problems that sheep have so that I could understand myself and understand the people that I'm leading. That is why I bought that book. I still have it. It's called The Diseases of Sheep. I have it at home. It's a very big textbook for people doing agriculture, um, animal science husbandry, animal husbandry, and so on. You know? So, this is a pattern. The sheep will just keep going around like that. Same way. So, your life without some kind of guidance will be self-destructive because the very ground that you eat, do you understand, is what you are destroying. So without the shepherd's input, you destroy yourself and you destroy your life. And so that is why you find out that people who have a lot of guidance from their shepherd have a lot of what I call the signs that somebody is being led by a shepherd. You see, a sheep 
which is not being led by a shepherd and a sheep which is being led by a shepherd are two different sheep. Sheeps. Is that the, the word? The two different things. One that has a shepherd, one has no shepherd. One that is just going on its own and one that is being led from place to place. Now, you will, you will notice that if you are a pastor, the sheep that you are able to give the most input to are the ones who prosper most under your leadership. You see, after being a pastor for some time, I have some people that have been able to lead the person, do this, go here, do this, do this, do this, do this. And you find out that the people you are able to lead most, prosper most. <laughs> and that's my experience. When I say prosper, I mean doing well in life. I don't necessarily mean becoming a rich person, but flourishing and doing well in life. Usually, when I look as a shepherd, you, you see, you can have guidance. You can guide people. You can guide them more intimately. You can guide them in more detail. You can guide them more often. Depending on how they are, because our sheep are mobile. Sheep have the mind. Our sheep, they are deciding whether to listen or not. Just like ordinary sheep. So ladies and gentlemen, being a sheep is, is a very important thing to look up to a shepherd and to constantly receive guidance from the shepherd whom the Lord appoints over your life. And the more guidance you have, the more you prosper, the more you flourish, and the more you do well. Same thing goes for a, a pastor who sees himself as a shepherd. The more you are guided by the shepherd, you get it, the more you flourish in your life. Now, one of the common experiences that I have experienced is the experience of leading sheep who follow you and take your guidance up to a point. And from a point they don't want, they don't follow you anymore. One day I was talking to a certain uh, shepherd, pastor, actually a lady pastor. And I, I said to her, look at your life carefully. I said to her, you are not following me anymore. You, you, don't, you are not following me anymore. You, you, are not, you are not under my guidance as a shepherd any longer. And then she was listening to me. And I said, yes. I said, look at yourself. Who, where will you have become a pastor in the world? Which, which church would have made you a pastor? I said, the fact that you are a pastor, your husband is a pastor. It shows that you were following me. You followed me from school. You listened to me. You see, because in, even in those days, it is more radical to follow me in those days. Now it's still, you need to be radical to follow me. But then you needed to be even more radical. Well, we were not a church. We were not known. To, Come, let's go here. Let's do this. We are starting a church. We are going here. We are doing this. I said, you followed. You believed. You came along. But I said to her, yes, ago, you stopped following me. When I went forward and I said, Let's go, let's work for the Lord all out. You wouldn't be want to work in full-time ministry. You didn't want to follow into that. And then when I said, let's go ahead, let's do this. You wouldn't want to follow. Let's do, go further. Let's be missionaries. You wouldn't want to follow. And you stop following and you don't even listen to me preaching anymore. You don't even read the book. All that you have is 11 years ago when you used to, when, I, when you used to be around, and I would share, those, that's when you stop following. And this is a common pattern that you have when people follow. And I think it also comes from familiarity and so on. That the more 
people stay around the more they feel i know what he's going to say next i know what he's going to say he has nothing to say except this and that and that these are the four things that he, he always says so you find out that we lose out on the blessing of what we could have become or what we could have done and then we veer off and that is the greatest danger now one of the things that philip keller noted was that sheep therefore always have to be kept on the move otherwise they destroy themselves because if you just leave them they always go to the same place where they ate yesterday they go to the same place where they ate. they go to the same place so you, you have to keep moving and now when you are in a good church you find out that the shepherd is always moving on to something new he said okay we are we are doing this now okay we are we are going here now okay the next thing we are doing is we are having this new thing that we are doing okay we are going on to have this type of program okay we are moving on and you see that some people will follow up to a point then at a the point they say you know we, we we can't come for this marriage program because you feel you know everything that you need to know about marriage but you don't know everything that you need to know about marriage because something is coming in marriage that you haven't seen one yet some of the goodness that you experience in your marriage is good because you haven't reached a particular mile we have mile 10 mile 11 mile 15 mile 20 mile this mile that different miles hey. are you listening to me so you find out that you get to a point and you stop so every pastor here can testify especially pastor older pastors can tell you the sheep that they are able to have a continuous and sustained guidance and input into their life this and those whom they are able to have an intimate or a close input into their lives are people who flourish more we say sheep flourishes more when we get on to another chapter you see there was one sheep a female sheep and he just in the end he decided to just kill it because it was causing so much problem you have orangus and things like that. Some of them you have to kill them. Hallelujah. So decide to be a sheep who allows yourself to be led by the Lord intimately. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Intimately. Amen. Sing that song for me. Like a shepherd, he leads us. Like a father, he feeds us. From the morning to the evening, till the sun rise again. Like a shepherd, he leads us. Like a father, he feeds us, and he is the great I am. Again. Like a shepherd, he leads us, and like a father, he feeds us. From the morning, From the morning to, the evening, to the evening, till the sun. Like a father, he feeds us. Oh, oh, he is the great I am. Now, the more, is it like in the morning, in the evening, till the sun goes down, you are able to lead them. There are some people you are able to lead until you get to a particular issue. Then you can't lead them anymore. You, they, you can't break through. You tell them they don't believe. They don't listen. They don't believe. They don't obey. So he leads us like a shepherd. Now, that is where phlegmatism becomes one of the greatest gifts of a pastor. A phlegmatic is somebody who doesn't react. He doesn't react. He doesn't strike. He doesn't take a decision. Phlegmatics don't take decisions. That's their, 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 that is how they are. They just hang around forever. 
when, when, when they are married to choleric women, the women are always taking decisions, trying to move on faster than their husbands. And it causes a lot of conflict. You see, but pragmatism, and that's why many of those ladies cannot be good pastors. Because they will just cut off the sheep, you see. <laughs> Out. You are dead. You are gone. You are, you've made a mistake. Finish. You are finished today. Today is your last day. You are out now. You shouldn't have made that mistake. But if you make that mistake in my presence, you are gone. Hey! But the phlegmatism of a pastor steps in to be non-reactive to a ship that goes its own way. And you just sort of hang around. So they come to their sense or something bites them. Then they, and they come back and say, ah! What you said was right, and you just must oh yes, let's go this way. <laughs> Gently. Yeah. That is why, that is why everybody was created by God. And every temperament was created by God. It's not like one was created and these are defective ones. But we have defect, factory defects. I once bought a tape deck. It was a factory defect. It didn't work from the day one. But it was not that that is a, a type that they make. It was a bad one of something. But people, there is no badly created person. Everybody is made a certain way for a certain reason. To do some particular thing. And that's where phlegmatism comes. There are some people, when it comes to following a man, you know, many years ago, I had a pastor friend of mine, and he said to me, you know, when it comes to matters of the heart, you can never trust a woman. That's what he, that's what, no, I'm not telling you what I think. I'm telling you what he told me <laughs> some years ago. <laughs> he said, when a boy comes, that will be the end of all this prayer and this and that and all that they are following you. That's what he told me many years ago in school. You cannot trust them. Well, as soon as they have their heart is whatever, off. He said, I should watch and see the young, young girls that are in the system. And usually when you see a young girl very committed in the church, there's a brother somewhere that has added to include the commitment. Uh, you look around, you see that there's a brother there that has it's a hidden factor to the serious zealousness of the person very, very committed in the ministry around. Hey! That is why we get surprised sometimes when later in life and in the, in the ministry, they, marry you, you, they are married to pastors and they don't look as committed. They rather look at hindrances. And you say, that, but this girl, she was very committed. She was committed because she has seen something. Which people don't reveal as what they have really seen. One day a certain man was accused of stealing a horse. <laughs> he said, I have not stolen the horse. He said, the horse is for me. But the people said they were going to kill the man. And then somebody said, somebody came and said, look, let the horse decide who is the owner? Because this man says the horse is for me. This man says the horse is for me. Do you understand? So the people said, okay, it is fair. This man should stand here. This man should stand here. And they should all call the horse and see who the horse will go to. So the man who decided, one of the guys immediately went to the right. And the other guy was standing where he was, where he was talking. But this other guy went to the right. And they all started to call the horse, Whiskey! Whiskey! So, and the horse was standing in the middle. Look here. Whiskey! Come. Whiskey! And the horse would look like this. And suddenly the horse decided to go to the right. The man whom they were going to kill eh, got the horse. When the guy got the horse, he said, you see? 
So he climbed on the horse and he took off. And the other guy said, you are a liar, the horse is for me. <laughs> but anyway, the guy escaped with the horse. Later, his friend asked him, is the horse for you? He said, no, it's not for me. <laughs> what strategy did you use to call that horse? And the guy said, you see, the water, I was standing by the water. There was water standing by my side here. So as I was called, whiskey! Come on! Hey. Whiskey! So you see, as people are moving in certain directions, they have seen certain things. <laughs> Their eyes are on the sparrow. Hey! Is on the sparrow as he's moving with commitment. Hey. Anyway, back, let's be serious. <laughs> what I am sharing with you, what I'm trying to tell you is that sheep need to be led. But unfortunately, we all have areas where we refuse to be led. When I see uh, when it comes to prosperity, many of my sheep have not followed me when it comes to prosperity. And yet I have gone on into higher and higher levels of prosperity. And I've watched them as they are searching for things, they could not even stay close. It's true. Today I find out I know much, much more about prosperity, business, so many things. You would think the church is even a business. But many of these people have not followed. When it comes to the, the field of, I studied accounting. I, I, I'm into this. I studied this. I studied that. But many people, if they were to have followed, one sheep of mine who followed me, you see, one day I went, some, I went um, somewhere to England and I met some of my shepherds or I don't know if they were pastors. And I started to give advice and there was one guy who was a businessman and I, I said to him what 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 business do you see because I'm a shepherd you see a shepherd is like a father he may be a prisoner if he's your father he may be a fool but he's your father he himself may be may have marital problems but he's your father and the Bible says honor your father so God chooses the words of the Father to bless you. So even though I may not be a businessman, I sat, I sat in front of these guys who claim to be doing, doing business trying to get money. And I asked him a question. I asked him, I said, where is your house? He said, what? I said, where is your house? Do you have a house? I said, I don't have a house. I said, how do you claim to be doing business? You don't have a house. What are you doing? So I told him to build out. He told me, he said, look, many years later and several houses later and millions of dollars later, he told me, I owe you all my houses. I owe you my house and what I have. But many sheep will not follow when it comes to some things. They feel that they know all about it. When am I going to follow this guy? Many people look at me as a spiritual person. I'm a spiritual person, but I can tell you, these things were not bought with just tongues. It's true. Are you listening to me? Yeah. So I'm just saying that the more you are able to have an input as a shepherd into the sheep's life, you keep them from just going down the road, down the road. Rarely do you find a sister who comes at a certain point and is close to a real shepherd who doesn't get married properly. Rarely. It's true. I, I'll let, you, you may not like what I'm saying, but I, I, I will say it again. 
rarely do you get a sister who comes at the right time who is close to a shepherd. I mean, when I say close to a shepherd, the shepherd is telling her, do this. Who doesn't get married properly? Yeah. And again, rarely do you have a sister who is close to a shepherd. I mean, a marriage, husband and wife, whose marriage doesn't stay somehow on track who are close to the shepherd because it is the shepherd who will say look you see you are a bad husband it's not that your wife is bad you are a bad husband you need a referee you see sometimes the shepherd behaves like a referee say stupid girl sit shut up stupid boy sit down without a shepherd There are many things that would just not be. So I'm just saying that disconnection from a shepherd is your own personal distraction. There are many people. That's why I keep on crying. Listen, you you think you know, but you don't know. (laughs) You think you know, but you don't know. Because if you know, produce the fruit of your knowledge for us to praise you that you really know. Passing an exam means nothing. I was explaining to one of the uh, pastors of the Bible school that for some people to say they have done an exam in certain things that I have written, even when I look at their faces, I know they, they don't know anything about that book. And that they say they have passed that exam. And I say it means that there's something wrong with the exam. There's a sickness in the exam. Because when I even look at their faces, I know. What exams have you, have you done? What examinations have you done in the school? Huh? Pardon? No. Uh, pop and pop and loyalty and disloyalty. Shall I take you through a loyalty and lo- loyalty discussion right now? You have done loyalty and disloyalty exam. Look at her face clearly. Uh, should I take you through a loyalty and disloyalty discussion right now? It's different from singing. It's not about singing. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't have to embarrass you this evening. Shall I take you through a loyalty and disloyalty discussion right now on this stage? Small one? Just a small one? Small one? <laughs> small one? <laughs> you will start singing just now. <laughs> So the fact that you say you've done an exam or you've read a book or you've been in the church, listen, always value the step-by-step guidance if it is possible in your life. And learn to believe things you don't understand. If the sheep understood that when I walk here, it destroys me and it destroys my life, do you think the sheep would do it? No, so the sheep has to follow somebody who knows more and somebody whom you don't understand what he's doing. So often as a shepherd, I come to the junction. I see somebody. I say, do this. The person look at you. Then I withdraw. So it even came to a point where some people ask, why don't you say? Then I say, look, I have said to people before. In the end, it becomes as if I'm trying to dictate in somebody's life. So in the end, you end up just looking at people. When somebody says, I'm going to distract myself, you say, oh, may God help you as you go. Yeah, may you come back when you are finished. You end up just watching people and smiling. So it's a great blessing. Amen. Sing that that part again and then you can go before something happens. Like a shepherd, he leads us. And like a father, he feeds us. From the morning to the evening till the sun Before I start asking questions, 
Number one, seven signs that you are truly following a shepherd. Number one, the first sign that you are following a shepherd is prosperity. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So the very, very first sign that you are following a shepherd is prosperity. Number two, calmness. The second sign that you are being led by a shepherd is calmness. He leadeth me by the still waters. Reassurance and calmness. Amen. There's a lot of agitation. How many realize that there's tension in the system? And sometimes you just need to be calm. People wonder why we, we still keep coming to church. Well, we need to be calmed down. How many realize that you need to be calmed down and just sort of cool off? Number three, spiritual food. Spiritual food. The more you keep eating spiritual food, the more it's a sign that you are being led because he leadeth me, he makes me lie down in green pastures. I lie down in the middle of food. How many of you are in Lighthouse Chapel? Are you not lying down in the middle of all kinds of food? Books and macanets and tapes and CDs and DVDs and I mean, you cannot even eat the green pastures that are all around. Is it about marriage? Is it about prosperity? Is it about this? Is it about anointing? Is it about what? You are lying down inside the green food. Hey. Number four, comfort. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You are comforted. I didn't say the problem is solved. I said you are comforted. The problem is solved is different from you are comforted. When you are crying and you are being comforted, does not mean that the problem is gone. Number five, anointing. Amen. Thou anointest my head with oil. You become more and more and more anointed the more you and more and more you follow. The more and more you follow, the more and more you become anointed. Because the Lord is leading you. He says, thou anointest my head with oil. Number six. Six signs. Look for these signs. Goodness and mercy. Wow. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Today I met somebody who has named one of his children goodness and the other mercy. So goodness and mercy are in the house with him every day. Hallelujah. And the last is eternal joy. Eternal preparation for your eternal blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, somebody said but Bishop, I've been in the church for a long time. I'm not seeing the prosperity. Bishop, I have I've been around since 2009, 2008. I've been listening to all the messages. And I've been trying to apply them. But I don't see goodness and mercies in my life. Bishop, I'm part of the flocks that you have. But sincerely, I am always wanting something. I shall not want does not apply. I'll be reading your book, Model Marriage. But my marriage is not a model marriage. What shall I do? Now listen, let me just tell you something. If you are a sheep, and when we meet you, we try to start leading you, and you have led yourself onto the top of Mount Apajatu, <laughs> when you are supposed to be on the plains, Accra plains, and where we are leading you, from Mount Afajato to 
Accra Plains to come and eat grass. Will you agree with me that even after three years, we may only be around Hohoi, still coming towards Accra Plains? But if you meet a sheep who has not yet traveled, do you understand? Who has not yet traveled to Mount Afajato? And you are leading that sheep to Accra Plains. Will you agree that since 2008 to 2010, you may be nearer the Accra Plains? Yeah. So sometimes you see that you have, you have messed up your life. You have got a child with this man, another child with this man. Now you want a model marriage. Do you understand? And we are now leading you to a model marriage. Hey! It's not going to be easy. It's going to take some time to come and descend from that mountain to get you towards Accra Plains. And you see, pastors are constantly dealing with people who have led themselves for years into all kinds of wilderness situations and are now struggling to lead people out of far corners. Hey! Even the shepherd sometimes is at risk for, like, to climb Mount Afajato. He's almost falling down the waterfall to be able to carry you, just to get you from the top of the mountain down. And you'll be insulting him. You say, uh, you say you are a shepherd. You say you take me to Accra. Uh, look at where I am. Is this Accra? Is it not water region? Why do you say you take me to Accra? I'll be in the church. I'm going to another church. You see now. Then you go to another church. After being brought down from Mount Amount Afajato downstairs. Now you go to another church. Where you say this is a better church. I feel the anointing in that church better. My pastor, old pastor had no anointing. He was just a teacher. And then that pastor will also start bringing you from the foothills of Mount Afajato towards Hohoi and towards Peve and other villages. Eh? Ave and other towns on the way towards Peki. When you get to Peki, because of the insult that you gave against your first father who risked his life to bring you down from Mount Afajato, a wind will now blow you into the Akosombo waters. <laughs> and you will now be insulting that second pastor that he likes money. He likes money. He's not interested in the real work of God. Now you are in the Akosombo waters. A third pastor comes. He has to swim to get you out of the waters. Hey! And now he's drying you, drying you. And somebody will say that he is in love with you. People will say, if you are a female sheep and he's a male shepherd and he's drying you, people will come and say he is in love with you. Hey! Because you were wet and they were drying you. As they were drying, you said he's in love with you. Hey, my boy. And then it's now carried. So sometimes you have spoiled your life. The pastor is struggling. Each pastor who meets you is struggling. One from the top of a mountain. From another one from the top of a mountain, the bottom of a mountain down to another d- d- distance. One from the waters out of the water to just ha- dry your hair, your wool. And then by now you are an elderly sheep. And he's leading you to green pastures. He's going towards Accra Plains. Past Peki, Akosombu, and he's coming. Coming. When he gets to Tema, traffic. There's a lot of traffic. Now, <laughs> at Tema, we thought we were just about to enter Accra Plains. The motorway, and then we are getting towards the crown. But now there's a lot of traffic. So many people came before you who also need beloveds. 
and some of them are younger than you. You were on Mount Afajato. You came down the mountains. <laughs> hey! We are now bringing you. You've now reached. There's traffic at the right tema. Traffic lights. And they are younger. So now we need to deploy a higher power to get somebody of a beloved of your age. Hey! You are an old man who has not built a house for himself. You are about to retire. When we were preaching, build a house. I have personally taken my time to preach, build a house. You look at me and say, oh, you, your father has money. That's why you say build a house. I beg you. I beg you. I won't say, I won't say your matter again. When we talk about certain things, you insult us. When we say uh, you should serve God, you should live for God full time, you say, oh, as for bishop, only kill yourself for Jesus and, and, and uh, those type of messages. Now, as you are getting older, you yourself, what you are doing, you see that it's useless. You see it. Now, you want us to lead you with all your financial problems. There are a lot of people with financial problems who want to be in full time ministry. Your forest bureau is not working. Your computer repairing job is not working. Your, uh, 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 what do you call it? Communication center is not working because of new mobile phones. Your sewing business is not working. Your visa application to America is not working. Now you want to bring all your financial difficulty, lack of accommodation, lack of car. You are using an old beetle Bedford. Bedford, which we have stopped using years ago, you are still using Bedford. Oh, you want to come and upload and say, I feel the call of God. Bishop, as for you, I know you are a full-time ministry man. I want to bring, I want to be in full-time ministry. Hey! I want to kill myself for Jesus now that I'm an old man without a heart. But I've seen that all of you have, you have somewhere to stay. The longer you can lead somebody, if he's your sheep. Me, if you are my sheep, I am anointed with words specially for you. If I'm your shepherd. But if I'm not your shepherd, that's what someone says. I have a problem. Can I see you? I ask, which church do you belong to? Which church do you belong to? I, I go to International Central Gospel. I say, go to your pastor. I'm a Roman Catholic. Say, go to your a priest. I'm an Anglican. Go to your pastor. I'm not your pastor. I'm not your pastor. I, I, don't, have a, I don't have an anointing to, to, to lead you. I can only lead my sheep. I can't lead somebody else's sheep. When you read, you see, different, when they are going to water the sheep, different shepherds will go with their sheep. They will all go to the water. And then when they finish, one shepherd will he will go this way. Another shepherd. And they're all the sheep are together. Every, sh every sheep knows the shepherd. They go, this group go here. This group. And exactly. If this one had 240, this 240, if one had 36, they go with. Everybody knows his shepherd. So they, they know my voice. You know your shepherd's voice. It's true. So, you will notice this seven signs of um, that you are being led, you are following a shepherd. One is prosperity. It's true. Anybody who's been my sheep for 20 years, you would have built a house by now. No matter the work you are doing. If you have been my sheep for 20 years, the last 20 years, you would have built a house. If you were really following me. It's true. And there are many people who thank me that they built houses. Because I encourage you, Find a land. Build a house. You'll be surprised. But you see, you must follow things you don't understand. That's the, that's the thing. When it comes to 
women. There are some things a woman doesn't understand. The same thing a man too doesn't understand. You just don't understand. You can't even fathom. You can't even believe it. You just have to follow. That's what it means to follow. That is why the younger people are the more you can lead them. They are more humble. They just look at you as a father. You know everything. They feel you are always right, even though you are not always right. <laughs> but as you get older, you feel your father is not always right. When, you're, when your child is very young, your child, you feel that like your father is the strongest. I will tell my daddy. <laughs> my daddy will come. You see, my daddy will beat you. My daddy will beat your daddy. My daddy's car. My daddy's car. My, you don't know that your father is a very poor man. We said, my daddy's house. My daddy. As you get older, you don't say that anymore. You say less. You, you, you don't say, my daddy, my daddy will. Occasionally you may say. And when you get to a certain point, you think you know. In fact, you think you, you, think you know as much as. Then at a point, you even despise what your daddy thinks and says. Because you are a teenager spiritually. Many of my pastors are spiritually teenagers. It's true. It is a teenager who despises his father's wisdom. When you cross a certain barrier, you say, that, hey, My father was a very wise man. One day, my father said something to me. He said, He said, and it was one of the only things he said about a certain topic. He said, It is not as you think. That's all he said. It is not as you think. <laughs> but I understood it later. He said to me, it is not as you think. So learn to follow. Humble yourself. As you get older and wiser. Recently after Iron Sharpeneth Iron, some pastors were back in one country, the southern part of Africa, and they were discussing. And uh, somebody was telling me, you know, he said that they were discussing. When they came here, they saw the Kodesh. They saw that this is a very, very successful minister. And when they went back to their country, they, they, they have repented of criticizing and fighting against the seniors and the fathers in that country. I don't want to mention the country. It's not in West Africa. Yeah. And they were just discussing. There was a man of God who was sitting and listening to them. He said that they were amazed. It's like you see that somebody has got a very mighty, strong and great worldwide ministry. But it's like he has respect for fathers and sees them as fathers and honors them. He said they never have seen anything like that. And that they are repented as they've come to their own country. Because almost every means, as soon as he becomes a little big, it's like, oh, this man has not done anything for me before. What kind of, he has a problem with this. He's this and that. That is how people are. Small preaching. Small, you lay hands on somebody. Take it, receive it. Shabaya. <laughs> Bring that one to me. Bring that one to me quickly. Not, not that one, this one. Then they feel so powerful. And when I'm having a conven convention, they say, well, uh, Bishop is having a convention, but I have a convention the week after. It's like, you have your convention, and I have my convention. I can do, you can do. We can do. That is why in medicine, when we take our... Uh, of the first sentence is I shall respect my teachers. Wow. And we know in, med in medicine you somebody, we are all called doctor but there's a difference. There's a difference. Yeah. We have a lot of respect in medicine. There are people who can operate without anesthesia. Without blood. And you will get up. Yeah. I had a teacher who taught me the fact that I passed gynecology exam does not make me anywhere near a man who can operate. Not that he can. 
he has operated. He told me, no anesthesia. What you do? Patient die. What you do? You cut. Cut the woman. Open. He said, what you do? Patient die. No blood. I took the blood. I put it inside back to her. What you do? Patient die. He cannot even speak English. Well. An Indian man. There was no surgeon like that man in Kolebu Hospital. The, way, the highest level of something, that is when you call him. What do you do? And he was the kindest in exams. So why student fail? Student no fail. Student no fail. Why student fail? Student no fail. <laughs> student pass. He, would t- he can save women's life as they are dying. Can't save them. Oh, we have some type of disease called VVF where the urine comes from the wrong place. So when the woman is walking, urine is dropping out, to, 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 like that. It's not easy to operate and it's not easy to cure because of the urine. When, when it is being healed, urine goes inside and it infects. He was the only person who, not, he was the one of the only people who could repair that thing in a way and the person would be okay. Hey, and I call myself a doctor by him, even though I've passed O and G exams, obstetrics and gynecology, junior clerkship and senior clerkship, oral, clinical, and written exam, I am now standing by him. Well, <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? We are talking about people that can bring patients back to life on the on the table. We are talking about people who have used their ingenuity and every skill. When somebody is bleeding and you cannot, they can remove the person's womb in front of you so that to save the person's life, tie in all kinds of vessels in the middle of the night. Nine hours on their feet, surgical operations, saving life. And I stand and say, well, because I've done junior clerkship and senior clerkship. And I've got a textbook that I read without understanding and managed to get some MCQs that are some MCQ plus one minus one and through wisdom and intelligence I passed. I say I'm a doctor and they are also doctors. That's how it is in the church. Yeah. You just pass her. exam. loyalty. You see the girl upstairs? She said she's done loyalty. She's done loyalty. If I call her right now, you see, I will embarrass her. It will become, should I do it? It will become, it will be something. It will be something here. You may not enjoy her songs again. So, always tell yourself, hey, look, I'm, I'm just a sheep. When you are madam and you have got your children walking around, you are still nothing. Look in the mirror, you see that you are, even the nothing is less than nothing now. Or you've not been looking in the mirror. Be looking periodically. But then you are less than nothing. Value where is going down. Tell somebody, value where, value where, value where is going down. <laughs> Stand to your feet, let's go home. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Lift your hands to the Lord. Father, thank you so much for this wonderful experience, being in your presence to receive your holy word. Thank you for the eternal joy, goodness and mercy, the anointing, the comfort, the calmness, the spiritual food, the prosperity that you give to us as we follow you. We love you. We thank you. We honor you and we praise you. And we pray, Lord, for grace to continue to serve you to follow you and to obey you all the days of our lives we thank you we give you praise in jesus mighty name and everyone said amen as every head is bowed and every eye closed you are here tonight you want to you want to give your life to jesus christ you want to say pastor please pray with me i want jesus to come into my heart and make me a new person maybe somebody invited you to church but deep down in your heart you are you are far from god you want to say pastor please Pray with me. Help me to know the Lord. I want Jesus to come into my life and make me a new person. If, if you are here like that, you want me to pray with you, you want to give your life to God, 
then lift up your hand. I'm going to pray with you right now. Just only your right hand. Lift it up high. God bless you. So that I can pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Lift it up high. Pastor, help me to know God tonight. I want Jesus to wash away my sins. Your right hand. God bless you. If you have lifted your hand, I want you to come to me. Come from where you are standing at the back. Come from the side. Come from wherever you are. Come. 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 I want to pray with you in the front here. Come all the way to the front. I will love her. I will ever love and trust in me. His presence daily. Come, my dear, come. Let's pray. Wow. God bless you. What's your name? Mabel. Lift your hands up, Mabel. And close your eyes. Everybody join with us as we pray. My sister, come quickly as we pray tonight. God bless you. What's your name? Rose. Okay. Everybody join. We are praying together with Mabel and Rose together tonight. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for tonight. Please forgive me for my sins. Please wash away my sins. Make me a new person. Oh, Jesus, I love you. From tonight, I come to you. I come to the cross of Jesus Christ. Oh God, have mercy on me. Cleanse me, Lord. Save me, Lord, from my wicked ways. From today, I give my heart. I give my soul to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for saving me tonight. Wash away my sins in the blood of Jesus. From tonight, I belong to God and I will serve God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. I love you, Jesus, and I thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Mabel and Rose, God bless you. Huh? Now listen, look at our pastor. He's waving his hand here. I want you to go with him. He's going to pray with you, and then you come back and join us. Okay? Give the Lord a mighty clap offering for Mabel and Rose. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord.